In the last video, we talked about what odor is, what odor compounds are, and how we measure them. In this one, we'll talk about what are the best general approaches to managing odor, and then in the following video, we'll talk about how to destroy odor compounds if you're able to collect them from your site. So there are three levels of approaches that I think about when talking about the overall odor management approach, and they kind of blur together at the edges, but just conceptual ways of thinking about them. So the first and most effective way is to prevent odors from forming in the first place or from escaping from where they are. The next is to, if you have some odors happening, minimize the distance from where they are being emitted to how they are being collected. And then the third thing is kind of looking at a building scale. Um, how can we make the building so that any odors that get out of our small sub processes are prevented from going out into the world? So starting with level one, preventing odors from form, forming and volatilizing in the first place. And we'll look at um, three types of facilities. So starting with the landfill, a lot of this comes down to our daily operations. So daily cover is very important. Um, in the picture you can see you don't see a lot of waste on this site. It's either covered um, with soil for construction or traditional daily cover or there's a alternative daily cover tarp being put on there. And that's one of our most important ways to stop uh, odors that are being generated by the waste, and there's nothing we can do about that, from getting out and into the air and blowing away. Other things are minimizing the size of the working cell, or um, so there's less waste exposed at any one time, minimizing the time to cell closure so we can get that final cover on, which is gonna do a way better job of our daily cover of keeping the odor in, using horizontal landfill gas collection trenches so we can actually start pulling gas out of that waste a lot sooner and have it going down into our collection system, then up and into the atmosphere, balancing the well field so you know you're always optimally pulling in as much gas as possible and letting as little as possible go out into the environment. And then there's also other things like washing the wheels. So all these trucks that are driving up onto the landfill might be picking up odor on their wheels and then driving off site. So things like that can also prevent you from carrying your odor onto the roads and off into the world in different places. Composting, we have similar process-oriented ways of minimizing um, the odor. And so the first thing is just proper aeration to stop the process from going anaerobic and controlling that process to have that healthy environment that we're producing mainly CO2 rather than shifting over to producing those uh, reduced organic compounds, which tend to be our odor compounds. Um, with outdoor composting, we can enhance our odor control by doing things like using a gore cover system. Um, so you can comparing the pile shown on the left here with the cover on versus the pile on the right, which is would have the cover on, it has the cover off in the picture. You can imagine it's going to be a lot harder for the odor to escape from the covered pile than the uncovered pile. And you can even, if you want to go a step further, you can put uh, a gore system or just open windows inside a really big building to keep it all indoors. You could also do an in-vessel compost technology such as tunnels um, or a rotary drum, uh, different things that have ways to contain that odor rather than just being open to the environment. And then for enclosed facilities, so I could be talking about a transfer station um, or an in-vessel AD or a compost or do a lesser extent a materials recovery facility. We want to do things like balance the tip floor and what that means is never have extra material that you're not going to be able to deal with that day that's going to be sitting on there overnight and going anaerobic and generating odor. So just doing the operation so that you never have that much waste sitting out there. Um, secondly, using enclosures and covers over any stockpiles of material, tanks, equipment as much as possible to contain any odor that would arise from them. And that's kind of shown in the picture on the right side of the slide here. Um, so one way of doing a tip floor is just to have a flat floor and you dump all the waste in it and you pick it up in dozers and do different things with it. Um, what's shown here is using a recessed pit. So the trucks will drive up to the pit. It usually has a lid and then it opens up momentarily. 
the waste gets dumped in, the door closes, and then it gets augered out into a process. So almost as immediately as it gets in the door, it's behind a cover and then piped off somewhere else. And that's a much better way to control odor than having a big pile sitting there and moving it around with a dozer and stirring it up a lot. So just by um, using some of those techniques in the design of the process, you can kind of shut doors on odor and keep it contained as much as possible throughout the process. And this has to be balanced a little bit with confined space considerations. Um, as we're putting all these covers and enclosures around things, we also want to make sure that it's uh, safe for the workers who are going to be working in these places and you know, not requiring them to go into these confined spaces that you're creating by your process design. 